Machinima, a method of making animated film using software similar to that designed for making video and computer games. As a kid, I grew up playing video games. I used to play Pokemon, Sly Cooper, Need for Speed, and just about every PlayStation 2 game. They were my life, and they helped shape me into the person I am today. I used to get sucked into the stories of other gamers. How they managed to clutch out a match, or how they met a high-ranking player, or how they had a fun experience in the game. They were just fun to listen to, and I guess helped shape an even bigger community and culture that I felt I was just scratching the surface of. Or at least that was the theory until I bought Halo 3 in the fall of 2007. That was when I was introduced to the most creative and unique community I would ever be a part of. Hey dude, check this out. This is the game the ESRB had to make a whole new rating for. Oh really, let me see. It was in Halo 3 that I was shown what machinima was, and I thought it was hilarious. Most of them were toilet humor and inside jokes about games, but eventually, I heard about this hugely successful Rooster Teeth Machinima, Red vs. Blue, and it blew the doors wide open. I had never imagined such a form of entertainment could be taken to such a level of production. The comedy wasn't just Halo and toilet humor. It had mainstream quality. Stop right there, Simmons. What? Is it danger? The blues? No, you are not walking across my floor with those boots. I just mopped it. I became addicted and eventually found myself subscribed to people like Digital Fear, the creator of RB and Chief and It's a Wonderful Life, whose brand of comedy stood outside anything anyone else was doing and captured the toxicity of matchmaking to a T. Hey guys, you guys, holy shit you guys, you gotta see my ninja armor. Whoa, congratulations, dumbass. Yeah, really, everyone has that armor now. You're not pro, you're not special, you're an idiot. I thought I was the only one in the planet who had- No, you're not. But not all machinima was comedy. Some directors found a way to make serious content using the platform of machinima. Other long-term creators, like Black Plasma Studio, the creator of Project Middle Grounds, and Darknail, the creator of Forgotten Spartans, took on the hardest challenge of all, creating feature-length productions in a video game. These stories actually had gripping moments and great characters, and truly set themselves apart from other creators. All these guys were able to elevate the genre to a higher level and bring credibility to machinima. Machinima was a mirror into the Halo 3 community. The same issues and situations that players were finding themselves in became ideas for machinima. Hackers getting banned turned into Bungie staff righteously wielding their great ban hammers and using it to punish those who had caused harm to the community. High abuse armor looked so cool, but it stopped being cool when everyone had it. And it doesn't make you better at the game. Recon armor was unattainable to the community. So creators made a meme out of asking for it, almost fitting it into every skit. Right. I see you got the recon armor! I, yeah, I, I think it looks pretty sweet. I don't think you deserve it though! Ragers, teabaggers, five-star generals... Machinima had it all covered. But influence was a two-way street, 
By parodying Halo 3 culture, they were actually influencing it and creating a blood flow to the community, bringing everyone together to enjoy the game. Shortly after Machinima found its footing, everyone wanted to make Machinima. And easily enough, you only needed a capture card. Pretty soon, kids would be asking their parents for Pinnacle HDs or Black Magic capture cards, and I'm not gonna lie, I was one of them. I got pulled in. My whole life I had always wanted to be a YouTube creator, to make a skit, or to even direct a movie. But as a 12 year old kid, I didn't have the resources to make a movie like I wanted. But I did have an Xbox 360, and a copy of Halo 3. I didn't have to make stages or sets because Halo had a map editor, and I didn't need cameras or equipment because Halo had a theater mode. I could make my own sets, find players who wanted to be my actors, and record with my capture card. The simplicity of machinima led to the extreme popularity of the genre, and has set the stage for how gaming industries treat their communities in media today. But why don't we hear about machinima anymore these days? If you asked me, I would probably say it's because people grew up. Why don't people ride bikes anymore? Why don't people spend their Saturday mornings watching cartoons? Machinima is a reflection of our uncontrolled childish nature. It's infinite possibilities. It's having a fresh new idea and having the ability to create that video all on your own. It's being a member of a living, breathing community who aren't worried about being judged or scrutinized. It's going over to your friend's house to hang out with your best pals and playing some multiplayer. Making jokes and seeing these same jokes recognized in a machinima and getting the feeling that you're not alone and that other players are out there thinking the exact same thing that you're thinking. It's laughing at a joke about Halo acted and filmed inside Halo. Purely and unpredictably creative. Despite the limitations of being a kid trying to create a work of art in a video game. It's being recognized as a member of a rough but loving community of fun loving people all expressing themselves and getting together. Machinima isn't just homemade videos. It's artwork that comes from somewhere that us Halo players hold close and dear. If you enjoy Machinima, we share that connection. A connection to a community and a connection to the forgotten art of Halo 3 Machinima.